Hello and welcome to the Pasta Podcast where we talk about nothing but pasta. Today, we will not be talking about pasta. Today, we'll be talking about video games. I'm Olivia. This is... Gigi. How are you doing today, Gigi? I'm doing well. Yeah, so basically, our topic is going to be... We're just going to talk about video games. Um, so, I don't know. What's a, what's a game that you've been playing today, Gigi? Um, I was playing quite a bit of Minecraft today, as you know, because we were on the pasta realm. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, and all of you will not, um, me and Gigi have a realm that we started called the pasta realm. So, it's on Minecraft. <laughs> I think Minecraft is a pretty top-tier game. Yeah. it's It's been around for... The majority of the average Gen Zers life. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard. It's hard to be without it. You know, I feel like we. It's kind of like a childish thing, but it's also a very wholesome game. Yeah, it's a very versatile game. You yeah. can do it. It's it's come a long way. From like. I don't know if you remember the Pocket Edition. Like, oh, I do. No, like the beginning of Pocket Edition, though. Oh, I do. <laughs> like I the, remember um, four it was brick, the creative, four Yeah, the creative menu had like 16 blocks. And we didn't have glass panes. It was just glass blocks. And you couldn't go to bed. Beds didn't no. exist. Mm-mm. It was always day. Yeah. Which, I come to think of it, that's a cheat now, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that, like, at the time that I was playing it in creative mode, um, there was a night cycle. It's just that you couldn't sleep through it. <laughs> but you have to just yeah. deal with them. And Maybe. I think the mobs still attacked you when you were in creative mode. Like, you couldn't die, but they still, like, bugged you. Yeah. No, they they definitely did. And, like, I remember in survival mode, there was no um, food bar. All you had to do to get your hearts up was to eat. Yeah. There wasn't a food bar. And it, and it just vanished. There wasn't, like, a... There wasn't an eating animation like we have now. It just vanished <laughs> immediately. Man, those were the days, though. The, those were the days. <laughs> I remember this one world we had. Um, and it was, it was called Have. You remember Have, right? I don't know if I remember it by name, but that definitely sounds like a name that we both came up with. <laughs> we have, like, yeah, this is gold. Well, we had Had, and we had Have. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why those were the names, but they were. And I just remember playing on Have, and it was, like, fully creative, and that was, like, way before you could do Infinite Worlds on Pocket Edition. And so it was a very, it was a limited world, and we filled the entire thing up, because we yeah. built so much stuff there, because we just played all the time. I remember the, um, do you remember, like, the Hall of Fame that you had? Yes, I remember I do. that so vividly, <laughs> because... Um, I remember being really annoyed every time I had to add a sign onto there because you couldn't edit the signs. Mm -hmm. And that's a very new thing. They just added that you can just right-click on the sign to edit it. That didn't used to be a thing. Could you imagine if that existed during the Stampy's Lovely Garden or whatever? That would have been so helpful <laughs> for him. I mean, he probably still does not it, right? He, I, I literally was just like... He, I, I just stopped this channel like this morning. He uploaded a new Lovely World video this morning. Although I think that he's planning on ending it soon. He is like That's 830 sad. episodes in now. So. That's nuts. Could you imagine? If he's Lovely World 1K. <laughs> I feel like that is what got me through like 5th, 6th grade. Yeah. Like that like coming home like every like I forget the days he uploaded them, but coming home those days and like doing watching those videos and then doing my homework that was those were the days, man. Yeah, sometimes I wouldn't do my homework. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I would do it after, but like I would watch the video first. I don't I don't feel like that turned a generation into iPad kids though. I mean, I guess it it didn't turn us in, into iPad kids. I think it's just that when you when you experience something as a kid that feels like limitless, you just want to keep doing it. Like YouTube felt limitless to me as a kid. There was more videos to be watched every second, so I stayed on it for a while. And Minecraft felt limitless because it felt like there were so many things I could do and so many things I could build. Which, imagine if I was an iPad baby right now. There is so much more to do. (laughs) I know. It's kind of, like, intimidating how much stuff there is now. Because I feel like growing up with, like, not the invention of, like, the internet. With, like, iPad kids and stuff. I feel like, as a kid, there was, like, so much... Like, not that we grew up with the internet or, like, the internet being invented, but we grew up with, like, the popularity of social media and, like, the invention of social media. Not the invention, but, like, I mean, I guess. I don't know. What was the first social media? Well, I think social media had just started when we were born. So it was about, like, I think social media only really got popular, like, in the early 2010s and, like, maybe a little bit before so, like, 2008-ish, I feel like I would say that, like, YouTube took off as more than just, like, a platform to, like, upload silly videos for your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, no, definitely. And I, I think Twitter had gotten popular around that time, too. So, I think, I think that growing up when we did in the early 2000s, we were right there at the peak of the internet yeah and so we were just just kind of (laughs) we were just kind of gobbled up by it swallowed bitten chewed devoured i told you i'd be dangerous with a thesaurus (laughs) let's find any other adjectives for olivia to come up with (laughs) i want a thesaurus so bad yeah, I'd be dangerous. I'd be unstoppable. <laughs> I will give you the Invincible. French check if you want it. Powerful. It is like a pocket one. It's about this big. Wait, the French dictionary? I don't want that. Yeah, that's Aww. very different than a thesaurus. That's French. It's a French thesaurus. dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> We get off topic so easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what's your opinion on violent games? I think they're great. You know, <laughs> like yeah. here's my. Thing. I think that parents think that violent games make your kid more violent, but then they let their kids play stuff like um, Minecraft, where you literally have to kill things to stay alive. It's the exact same. It's just that they're cuter. So yeah, there's no blood, but also there's mm-hmm. mods for that. Um, there's a mod for any anything. You can just it exists. There's some sick um, people out there. There is some sick <laughs> people out there. No, but I I agree with your point. I think it's it's a I think violent violent games. I'm not saying that kids should play like really violent games. <laughs> I think that the ratings on it like parents should stick to the ratings like if it's mature give it to a teenager don't give it to like your 12 year old son because i know a lot of people who played those video games when they were that age and they like didn't turn i'm not gonna say they didn't turn out well but like they got into bad habits later and i'm not saying that the violent video games are the cause of that but i'm saying that i don't know I think that you have to, like, see what your kid can take and what they can't. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying give, like your, I couldn't take give, it. Your, kid, give your kid a copy of Left 4 Dead right now, you know? Give your, give your nine and below <laughs> a copy of a, of a zombie killing game. But sometimes when you're, like, a teenager and everything, you need some kind of outlet to take out your anger. And yeah. that is a safer way to do it. I agree. Especially if they do have anger problems. 
Yeah. Um, because, I mean, sometimes it's, it can be the other way around, though, because I know that when me and my brother would play Call of Duty when we were younger, and that's a very violent game. And also, I I am not a fan of first-person shooter games anymore, but I know that they are very popular, especially... It seems weird how popular they are in America, (laughs) but I feel like that does make sense. (laughs) Um, But it just feels weird because it's like, I don't think that Call of Duty was very good for me as a kid. When I played it, I got nightmares. I didn't, I didn't like it. I mean, I had fun playing it, but I didn't like how I felt from playing it, but I would still go back and play it because it was fun. But then I stopped playing it and I was happier than I was before. So. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that, like, it's different because you were so young when you played it. Yeah. Like, no, you yeah. were, we were, like, 10 at that time that you were playing it, maybe younger. But had you been, like, 15 or around that age, I feel like it would have been easier for you to handle, although you might have still gotten night- nightmares. I still get nightmares. Me too. But not from video games anymore. <laughs> Um, well, well, coming around to that, actually, um, <laughs> cause that, that came out, what, when I was like, when we were like 12, 13, maybe. Yeah. So we were 11 it was 2014. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So 11 or 12 and, um, that was kind of like a a game that like kind of like grabs you as soon as you start playing it like you're like immediately like i am entranced this is a violent game but it's not violent if that makes any sense yeah like it's soup it's like it implies a lot is all it doesn't like show anything gory even with the newer ones and like security breach they don't show anything they just imply a lot of stuff. There's no blood. The only time I've ever seen blood in those games is like, and sister location when he gets scooped, there's like a red screen. Yeah. But that's that's it. That's not very gory. Yeah. Or like the 2D animation, but that's that's like the pixelated. You don't even... Yeah. And I mean, if you're a kid, like like us, like if you're like 12 years old and you don't read into the lore and you don't look up what that means, it's just like a thrill-seeking game. That's all it is. It's not creepy until you know. Like, ignorance is bliss, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean... It's a survival game. Yeah. And it's kind of like... I don't want to say it's a good introduction to horror games because... No, but it's a good game to play if you're into creepy stuff, but don't want to see it like me. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it happening in front of my eye. It's fine if it's implied, whatever, but I don't want to see it happen because or else that, that will give me nightmares. Yeah. And of course I've had my fair share of nightmares from Five Nights at Fridays. I mean... Any any game you play like that is going to give you something. What about you? I mean, I, I think I had, like, plenty of nightmares about it, but I don't think, like, it wasn't related to, like, the lore of the game. It was just related to, you know, like, being attacked by the animatronics. Yeah. Because I, I feel like, if anything, not knowing made me more scared of them. Because it made me think, why aren't they trying to hurt me? Yeah. <laughs> Protecting them. <laughs> uh huh. No, uh, have you ever heard? I used to have these dreams where I would wake up and then the animatronic would be standing in the door frame. And that would scare oh, yeah. me so much. And thinking about it scares me a little bit. <laughs> See, the thing, the thing that scared me as a kid, I think the most recurring nightmare I had related to it was. Um, the nightmare that I had that was most recurring was the song that Freddie sings. Um, 
but you know, before he kills you, I had that as a like recurring nightmare because I could hear it like when I was falling asleep sometimes, and it would be that is like, in my frightening. Ears. It is. It's crazy. See, it was the opposite for me because the song was weirdly comforting for me. I mean, it is. It's literally like it's a good song. Like as adults, you can appreciate it's that it's actually a good song. Yeah, no, it's no. a banger. I assume we can't sing the whole thing. Yeah. When you're an adult and you look up the lyrics, you're like, oh my god, this is about love. <laughs> <laughs> and well, bullfighting. I I think it's a <laughs> bullfighting. All you need in life, love and bullfighting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's a good song and I feel like it purely captures the something frightening is about to happen to me, but, like, I'm not that scared about it. Yeah. Like, it's the perfect song to capture that. That kind of feeling, you know? Yeah. No, I agree, because I feel like when we were when we were playing through the first five nights, I'm not even going to say the sixth night, because that one was not a problem. Because mm-hmm. you owned it. Um, for everybody listening, for, I'm going to give context. Um, yesterday, me and Gigi were playing on her phone, and I beat the sixth night of Five Nights at Freddy's in one go, and it was the first time I've ever done it before. So, I I don't mean to brag. I also might have done Custom Night on all zeros and failed at that, but that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's because we decided to just let it be, and Foxy was like, no, no. But otherwise, we would have been fine. Yeah. Maybe if we had gotten to like 2 a.m. and then just closed that left door, we would have been fine. I don't know. Anyways, getting off topic. Um, as adults, when you're um, playing the game, like the first five nights, every time that we ran out of power, it was like there was a little bit of hope. But if we were at like 4 a.m., we didn't have any hope. We were just like, all right, come on. You know, it was <laughs> kind of comforting. Because it's like, at least it's over and you get to try again, you know? And also, yeah. it's not a bad jump scare. I feel like the mm-hmm. worst one is when he's, like, um, when Freddy, like, comes at you at an angle. But that's mostly because I don't, like, every time that I've watched a FNAF video, I haven't seen that one nearly as much as the other ones. So I wasn't used to it. Okay, what do you think the scariest jump scare is in that game? In all of the games, in all of them in total? And what all do you of think? Them? What jump scare gets you every single time? Um, I think it might actually just be that Freddy one, like from the first Which game. One? From the first game, but, yeah, Freddy's jump scare from the first game when you're not out of power, but when like you've let him into the room because yeah. it's just it's so unexpected, especially because he can be in the room with you for a while. And you never know. Yeah. Like when we were playing the sixth night and you and he was being very gracious to you, not coming <laughs> into the room when you forgot to close the door. But we'd be like, oh my God, he's in the room. He's in the room. And he wasn't. But it's that anxiousness and then a sudden jump. Because yeah. it's way more fast than his other one. Very true. I have a very specific one. Which one? Um... Phantom Foxy in the third game. Oh. I don't know why. Because, well, because he's sitting there. And if you don't look over there, you don't see it. But sometimes you glimpse at it. And if you look at it for like a millisecond too long, he jumps. But you never know when he's going to jump at you. Yeah. Like it's different every time. I don't know why that one gets me every single time, but it does. I mean, he does, like, get very close to your face in that jump scare. In in the same realm, I will say my most unsettling jump scare for me is the phantom uh, marionette from the third game. Because that's the one where it just pans and it has that ringing in your ears. And it's also unnerving because it's like, this is the longest one out of all of them. And it's the worst one to have because mm-hmm. you can't. You can't keep track of where Springtrap is. He might have gone into the vent that can immediately kill you. And um, I think that there's some other kind of factor with it. 
that makes that one like I, I think it brings down like all of your utilities or something. I'm not sure. I could no, be it done. does. No, you're right. Um, also, um, night nightmare marionette. Yeah, the one in um, the fourth game, I think. <laughs> I think it's from the fourth game. Yeah. Where like you can hear the box going, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It just has to happen. Yeah, it's frightening because you feel it. It is really, it is really unnerving. I I used to like puppet, I'm used sorry. to it now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> used to the puppet. I like calling it marionette because the OGs called it marionette. It's a nicer name. It is. Um, but the marionette in the second game, when you like had not wound up the um, music box. You couldn't do anything about it once you had realized. So the same thing happens. And it's like a very, it's not even really that scary of a jump scare, but it always happens so suddenly because there's a sudden cut with the music and then it jumps out at you. Yeah. Like at the same time. So I think that one used to get me really good. (laughs) All right. Well, shall we roll around to the other half of this podcast episode? Yeah. So. Me and Gigi have compiled a list of our favorite games. Um, you know, mobile games, uh, computer games, console games, all games you can, and the online games. I have an online game on here. Um, and I thought it would be fun if we tiered them, ranked them, put them on a little tier list. And then um, after this goes up, which it will go up on Monday at 12 p.m. Um, after this goes up, we will post it about, an, what do you think, like an hour after the premiere? Sure. Just so it can be like everybody's already watched the whole video. So yeah. we'll post the tier list an hour after just so you can see how we ranked our compiled list. And um, Yeah, because it might change. Yeah. And you guys can let us know if you would have any rankings you would want to do or if you would have any changes you would add to our list. Yeah. All right. So our first game on the tier list. Oh, let me explain the tier list really quick, just in case people don't understand it. So we have S, A, B, C, D, E, and F. S tier being the best. It's the greatest game of all time. Nothing can top it, except whatever else it's in, and F being it's the worst game. But also, these are our favorites, so it's just our least favorite. Yeah, it'll probably be like F, A, and B. Yeah, so it's it's not necessarily like it's a bad game. It's just like maybe we don't play it as often. Maybe we don't like the story as much as we like the other ones. Whatever. Yeah. So, the first game I have on here is a classic that we've already discussed today. It is Minecraft. Yeah. What are you thinking, Jean? Minecraft has to be S tier for me. Because you can do anything in it. And, like, like, if you get bored of it, you can leave it for a while. But also, if you get bored of it, I could watch a YouTube video and immediately get inspiration from that video and be like, I need to do that, you know? Yeah. No, I agree. And it's so nostalgic for us. Yeah. I feel like we, a lot of the things that we did growing up consisted of us playing Minecraft. And it just, I feel like, I feel like it brought us closer together as friends. S tier? Yeah. Okay. Putting it in S tier. Our next one. Oh, by the way, these were all on Gigi's side of the list. Some of these, both of us have played it. Some of these, only Gigi has played it, or only I've played it. Um, But you could probably tell by how we address the game on which ones we've played or not. Um, The next game, Stardew Valley. Obviously, it's going to at least go on A tier for me. (laughs) I feel like it's... 
I, I don't think it's S tier exactly. And I think that for me, it's just because I can get bored of it very easily. And sometimes it's frustrating because it's like kind of a repetitive story. You can go different directions with it, but I've a hundred percent completed the game. I've gotten all the ch- achievements, all of the hidden ones, like, it's the only yeah. game on Steam I have 100 percented So <laughs> I like yeah. it that much, but also I've done everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I like I like it. I think it's a fun game. It's definitely not my favorite. Um, I think a lot of it is... Is this a mobile app? Is Stardew Valley a mobile app, too? I mean, or you can play just it on, on You can. Okay, yeah. well, I was going to say... It's not hugely versatile with the platforms it's on. I mean, it is because it is on multiple platforms, but like it doesn't work that well on console for me. Yeah, and I've got it. I've got it on um, mobile on my phone, and I don't like ever play it. Like I paid for it again, (laughs) (laughs) and I like don't play it very often because like the controls are weird and. It, it just makes doing things so slow for some reason. Yeah. It just, yeah, I it's feel fine. like the only true, like, good platform for it is, like, on PC or computer. Um, just because that's the easiest way you can get the controls to work, or else it's just kind of difficult. But otherwise, I think the story is good. I think it's an interesting game. I think there's a lot you can do with it. And it is very incredibly wholesome. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta kinda give it points for like it's like anybody can play it. Seriously anyone. Yeah. I'm thinking B B tier. Okay. You, <laughs> you don't sound like you want B tier. <laughs> well, I mean, I have other games on here that I would put in A tier. So yeah. I'm just fine. trying to I'm trying to look and see how we would combine our yeah. thoughts on the game. Because I feel I feel like mine is A tier, yours is C, so that would put it at B, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unless you hated the game, then that would put it no. at like E. <laughs> I play it when I have my computer and I have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds like it's a last resort, but it's really not, because sometimes I'm like what the heck? I'm gonna sit down and play Stardew Valley. Why not? Yeah, but it's definitely not a game that I would think I want to play a game today. Oh, I'm gonna play Stardew Valley. I, that's not what I where I go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enough talking. B tier. Sorry, Stardew Valley. Okay, the Stanley Parable. I've never played this game, so you yes. rank it for me, GG. So. I really like the Stanley Parable. It's got a special place in my heart. Um, it's basically, it's a game where you play as a character, Stanley, and <laughs> and you're in a parable now. And you're, you choose your own adventure, but like the narrator is like, uh, Stanley took the left door, but you can go through the right door. And if you go to the right door, he'll be like, this isn't the right way. But maybe Stanley wanted to go to the... Um, like a uh, break room or something like that. It's it's a very it's a very funny game, but sometimes it's actually kind of dark. Yeah. So like it's kind yeah. of like a choose your own choice type of game. Yeah, it's like a choose your own adventure and some of the endings are really dark. Mm-hmm. And some of them some of them like genuinely scared me. Like, there's an Easter egg. You you can, like, after you get the ending, it'll just restart you where you were, like, at the very beginning. Mm. Um, But some of the endings, like, there's one where you follow this yellow line because, like, the story's off and you, like, you f*** up and it's your fault. (laughs) But you have to, like, find out where the story is. Um, So you're wandering through, like, these rooms that you weren't allowed to enter before. And then if you get to the ending of that one... Sometimes you, when you walk back through to like start a different ending, you can see a character that's the player character for Stanley walking past a window, and it's just so unsettling. Even though like I know about it and I knew about it at the time, that 
that had happened to me for the first time, but it was really unsettling because I was like, I don't actually know if that, like, I don't know if, like, there's a jump scare or something that comes with that or something. But yeah. there's not. So. But, yeah. It's got limited ending- endings, though, obviously. Everything has a limit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in a, in a sense of, like, um, in a sense of being, like, um, overall with your favorite games, how do you think you would look at this game compared to all the other ones that you know and love? I feel like, and I, I feel bad doing this because he feels like a little bit low, but I feel like in general, compared to all the other games that I love, I would put it in C tier because I love it, but it's not like the best game. I don't play it over and over again especially because it's got an achievement called Go Outside where you don't play the game for five years. And there's another achievement for the deluxe version that has more endings and it's called Super Go Outside and you don't go, and you have, can't play it for 10 years. And I want to get both of them legitimately, so I haven't played it in a while. Wait, really? Yeah. That's the first game I've heard where they're promoting the player not to play. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. And my brother's got the five-year one. Because he bought it, like, when it first released, and it's been over five years. So when he got it, he was like, Gigi, I got the five-year achievement. And I was like, oh. He's like, now I can play it again. No, you gotta get the tenure. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so that's going in C tier. You're 100% about C tier? Yeah. You think? Okay. We do have a lot more games to go through, so... Let's try to keep this a little bit quicker paced. Okay, next game is House Flipper. Yeah. Explain to me what House Flipper is, JJ. I have never played it. Houses. Nice. (laughs) Solid. You just, you like buy properties and you like clean them and you like repaint things for like, there's different like levels of like this client wants this, you know? Um, and then you sell it and get more money. It's it's a house flipper game. You flip the houses. Um, Seems like we went through a phase of wanting to build. <laughs> yeah. Except this this phase came at like 16, 17. It was a recent phase that didn't last very long, but yeah, still bought the game with my adult money. So With your adult money? How often do you play it? Um, I probably haven't played it in like six months. I don't play it very often. No, so it's only it's is it more like a last resort type like of a, game? Yeah, it's kind of like a last resort kind of game where it's like I haven't played this. It it would be like I haven't played this in a while. I should take another look at it, kind of thing. Not like a oh, you know what sounds good right now? Flipping some houses. <laughs> So it's like my opinion on Stardew Valley, kind of. Yeah, kind of. So what do you think you'd tear it? I feel like I, I would tear it in D, but that's that's likely to change if I start playing it. A D, a D to me feels like mediocre, and it feels bad putting it in there. I might I might bump it up to like low C tier, but for right now, let's just put it in D. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can always change it. Yeah. Um, so D tier. In comparison with all your all your favorite games, House Flipper is in the D tier, the yeah. mediocre tier. But that it's okay. The would play, but not the, right now. <laughs> the thumbs up, the thumbs up of the tiers. The I'll play it later game. Yeah. Okay. House Flipper in D tier. Next. We have what remains of Edith Finch. Yeah. I've never played I, this game before. Explain. Yeah, I, had, I had a feeling you've never played this before because it's a very mm-hmm. it's a very specific game. Uh, yeah. It's another one of those choose your adventure kind of games, except you don't choose your adventure. Like the adventure is chosen. You just like there's little tasks at hand that you can do that oh. like are difficult ish. <laughs> See, I'm an um, open world type of person. <laughs> I don't like being yeah, it's too much. It's it's not an open world type of thing. It's like a it's a story. 
Um, it's about what remains of Edith Finch. <laughs> like House Flipper. The name is the, the, the title of the game is pretty much exactly what it is. Um, so kind of, but, kind of like walk us through it. Like, what is the main so, premise of the game? So you play as Edith and you find out later that she's actually pregnant. So keep that in mind when I tell you this. Um, so she gets the keys to this house that she used to live in. That is like insane. Like they've added so many additions onto the house that it is insanely. I don't think this is like OSHA <laughs> approved. I don't think it's OSHA approved. It's like it. It's like got so many wings of the house, and there's so many like creaky floorboards and everything. And it's like this place could fall apart at any second, and yet it's still here. Um, mm-hmm. And you you learn about all the, the stories about how. Um, this person died or the, how like her family members went through life. Um, and it's, it's really interesting. Cause after you like, you finish their stories, she adds it to like her journal of like um, her family tree. So it's really mm-hmm. just like learning more about her family and her family has had some <laughs> things happen to them, like um, consistently. Um but it's it's an interesting game. I really liked it the time that I played it, but I only played it once because it's not like I might play it again sometime, but it's not like a there's nothing new for me to do. I would yeah. just be re- No, I get that. Like there's there's nothing you can really figure out. Well, is it kind of like watching a movie in a sense of like it's always gonna be the same thing? But yeah. maybe- next time you watch it or play it you'll notice something you didn't before yeah it's more See, like that's kind of cool. yeah I feel like for me like this sounds like another house flipper situation but worse in the way that I've described it but for me it's so like specific to me that I feel like it's got to go in C tier mm. but like low C tier you can put it like behind the other game in C tier I don't remember which one it is <laughs> Started Stanley Valley. Parable. Oh, Stanley Parable. So. Okay. So C tier of what remains of Edith Finch. That sounds like a movie yeah. or like a book or something. It does. It, it should have been a movie, honestly. Although the graphics are great. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. We like a movie. That's good. Okay. Moving on. Our next game. Is classic, classic game, Five Nights at Freddy's. Now I am putting this on a very, very broad spectrum because there is a billion of these games, but I'm just gonna say that we're ranking number one. Yeah, I feel like, or at least like the first four games. Yeah, so, because that's kind of what we started with. So, let's say we're ranking the first four games, but we do enjoy the other ones. Um, I've just, I've only personally played the first four, so that's why I'm kind of biased. But, um, yeah, we're just going to stick with the first four for now, because they're the only ones that I've officially played. Um I know that Gigi hasn't really played the games, but you know them better than I do. So yeah. I feel like we we're only doing the first four. Okay. Yeah. Now what do you think? I feel like Five Nights at Freddy's is like one of it's one of those games that like when you pl- if you played it without like having the nostalgia, you might not really think that it's that good if you're like a horror fan. But I feel like it's more of a thriller game than a horror game to me. Definitely. Because it's not really it's not really scary. It's not in your face scary. All that there is is like jump scares and this vague threat. I mean mm-hmm. it's implied that you died at the end of the jump scares, but like <laughs> you know, it's not confirmed. You respawn. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, true. So I feel like to me it's like it's just it's kind. Of, it's a unique game. It was a unique, unique game at the time, mm. so I feel like it's got to go 
like my ranking for it would be no lower than B tier. I agree. See, because I do like that game, and I agree with you. I think that people, if they don't have the same nostalgia as us, then they're not going to think that it's that great of a game. But that considering the other games, and we're only speaking about the the first four, so the other three games add much more to the first one, which makes you like the first one even more, I feel. Yeah. So if you play the first four, then you're set to like them no matter, well, not no matter what, but like you're set to like them if you have an interest in them. So, but at the same time, I don't play it all the time. I'm not obsessed with the games as much as I was at 12 anyway. But um, I don't think they would be my favorite games ever. I think I would have to agree with the B tier because I do think it's a gen. I do think they're genuinely good games and they're well done, and their simplicity is what makes them so great too. At the same time, yeah. Um. So I think I I would agree with the B tier ranking. Okay. Okay. That was a very roundabout way for me to say that, but I said it. <laughs> she <Right>. did it. <laughs> okay. Moving on. To the next game. Okay, this is a purely GG game. Left for Dead 2. Yeah, I feel like I put this here because it's another nostalgic game for me. It was the mm-hmm. only video game that me and my sister played together. Um, and I remember when she brought like she brought a disc back from uh, when she was in London, and they had the two censored because this means like up yours. Or whatever. It's like it's like the it's like a middle finger in England. Yeah. Although I'm pretty sure the middle finger in England is just a middle finger, you know. Um, but it's like a rude gesture, so they had to censor it. So it, it's, it was like left or dead, <laughs> and then like the top of somebody's fingers, and then like the bottom of somebody's fingers. <laughs> um, but I've just got a lot of nostalgia with the game, I think. But but is it a good I game? Like I don't think, I don't, I love the game, but it's not very replayable and it can be very frustrating. And personally, like it's, it's a game that you would really have to play online if you wanted to play anything than the survival mode, because there's game modes where you can, like, if you're playing with somebody else, you can like become one of the types of zombies and try to kill the other person. I'm like, that's fun. Like, they've got different game modes, but I never really played any of them because the only time I would ever play them, um, my mom would tell me to stop because other people on the Xbox were, you know, like, talking shit about me (laughs) because I was, like, a nine-year-old and I didn't know how to play the game. Um, Wow. So I had to stop playing with other people, which, you know, was correct to do that. Thanks, Mom. But... (laughs) But, like, I couldn't play any of the fun game modes. Um, and I still can't because there's nobody nobody plays the game anymore. <laughs> and I yeah. wouldn't really want to play with a stranger. So I just play the survival now occasionally. And it's not very fun. So, so what do you think you'd rank it? I'm I'm going with a very soft, gentle, you know, you know how you told that one kid, like, you're going to be coming back to my class next year. Um, your, your ice skating class, she's not a teacher. Um, I'm going to give it a very soft, gentle, you did your best kid E tier. E tier, huh? That high? <laughs> 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 well, if we get if we get another E tier, then it'll be at the lower end of the E tier, you know. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Whatever you say, chief. Okay, moving on. <laughs> oh, a good All one. Right. Yeah, doing this a is lot a- of just me. We are doing a lot of just you, but we're also going to do do a lot of just me, too. So don't worry. I'll get my share. Um, Wow, we're taking a long time. We should probably uh, quicken this up a little bit. Um, Life is strange. 
I love Life is Strange. You know this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love Life is Strange too. It is. I think it's. It's probably the first game I've ever experienced that wasn't Minecraft. I want to yeah. say. Beside, not. I think I got into it before Five Nights at Freddy's, but. Yeah, I want to say it's probably the first game I experienced that wasn't that. And so yeah. it has that kind of nostalgia for me. Yeah. I feel like Life is Strange was like... It just it made me feel like good about myself, I think. Um, and I think that's mostly just because... I, I mean, okay. The main Lesbian. character... Lesbian. Yeah, the main character, Max, isn't confirmed to be gay. But there is a scene that you get the option to kiss Chloe because she's like, ha ha, kiss me. I bet you won't do it. And either you don't do it and she she's like, ha ha, you, you're a scaredy cat. Or you do it and she's like, whoa, that was kind of cool. Um, so I always chose to kiss her because I was like, oh my god, they're together. And I also yeah. always chose to kill the rest of Arcadia Bay. And you can't Chloe. kill Chloe. Yeah. Don't let that happen. So. Yeah. It's not a very replayable game. But I do own it on Steam. All of the chapters. I don't know why we have to buy all of the chapters. <laughs> but. Yeah. Or at least you used to. I don't know if that's fixed. But. No, it's it's a good game, though. It's It's a. It's a stable game. But I. Gave a, like, once you've played both options before, and plus you can go back in time and replay them if you need to. So, yeah, it's not super replayable, it's not super like, um, accessible to people. Like, I think that it's only it's available on console, I know that, and it's also available on Steam, and so it's not like. You can just play it on the go. Not that you would want to. <laughs> like, there's yeah. many other mobile games you could play that aren't Life is Strange. But that being said, it's a classic. It's beautifully done. It's a beautiful game. The graphics are amazing, especially for, like, that time that it mm-hmm. was out. And you also become so emotionally attached to Max. I don't know if you feel the same way as I do. I I do, and I also felt so emotionally attached to Chloe. Like yeah, you were her for spoilers. Halloween. Yeah, spoilers for the um, for the people who haven't played the game. But you already said a couple. <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because more than three people are going to listen to this. So the um, the scene where um, Max and Chloe find like something that used to be um, I don't remember what her. Um, ex-best friends slash um, definitely not best friends. They were definitely lovers. I don't remember what her name was. Um, Rachel. Rachel. Um, Because that was the whole thing where, like, Rachel was missing and they didn't know where she was. Um, When they find, like, a something that Rachel would never leave behind, it always made me cry. Because I was like, oh my god, she is dead. And Chloe's just coming to that realization and she won't like she she won't like admit it to herself even though it's 100% true. You saying that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say B tier, but after we've been talking about it, I feel like it should be an A tier. It should be an A tier. It was such a good game. <laughs> I can like... replay it. You want to replay it with me? <laughs> Fun fact, <laughs> the first time I watched that like somebody play that all the way through. It was PewDiePie. And I am not ashamed to say that because I was an av- I was an avid PewDiePie fan. <laughs> yeah. I think every kid around our age went through that phase because we didn't know, you know? No, it's so funny because I was totally like PewDiePie versus T series. I was so like subscribed to PewDiePie. But now I know, it changed. I was- I'm like subscribed to T series. Yeah, <laughs> especially given the fact that your family is very into Bollywood right now. Yeah, 
Like, who doesn't want to listen to Bollywood music all the time? I don't know what kind of life you would live if you didn't do that. So, um, okay. Life is Strange. I'm putting it in A tier for number one for nostalgia's sake. Good. And for number two, no- emotional sake. Yeah. Okay. Solid tier. Classic game. Nothing's wrong with it. It was created for people to enjoy the computer before the computer was enjoyable. Exactly. And now there's a mobile version of it. And by a mobile version, I mean about a million that always give you ads, even though they say they don't. So I think that solitaire personally for me is like, it's just nice. It gets your, it gets your brain, like it gets your brain moving. And also you don't have to think about it sometimes. It's for those people that want an easy game to play. It's for people that want a hard game to play. It's for people that um, are babies and they're just like tapping the screen. Like, because sometimes when you tap them, it'll like go to the correct card if there is a correct card to place under it. So I think that that's that's a way that I view solitaire. It's for everybody. S tier. S tier. S tier. I think so. For sol- S for solitaire. S for solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, the only S tier games we have are solitaire and Minecraft. <laughs> Olivia, S for solitaire, A for Arcadia Bay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're crossing crossing the ocean. Um, not Titanic style but rather a nice cruise ship style. Um, yeah, we're going to get into the games that I've played, which there are a couple. So, first one. Probably one of my favorite games of all time, next to Minecraft. And it is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, Gigi has had a hard time getting into this game, (laughs) which I am going to address for the sake of the tier list, because it is, it's not for everybody, as much as that pains me to say that, it's not for everybody, (laughs) not everybody's into it, but it's a great game if you're super into fantasy and and you're looking for something to escape into. It does... It is a little, I want to, I would do say it is a little diff- difficult to get into because it's kind of hard to find uh, something to catch you right away because there's not really something that catches you right away. Other than the fact that there's a dragon destroying the city within minutes of you playing and you have to like escape it. <laughs> um, but I do think that it is a perfect main story. I think the DLCs are perfect. Um, the only thing about it is that I think that the quests get a little repetitive. Yeah. Um, like, it's just like, okay, I'm going into a cave again. Yeah. And I do think that gets annoying, but out of all the Elder Scrolls games, I do think it's the best. Um, and also you get followers, which I really like, which you don't get much of that in the other Elder Scrolls games. I want to hear your input on Skyrim, Gigi. Um, my only input is like about why I couldn't get into it, I think. Um, and I still want to try. I'll just say that. I still want to try to get into Skyrim because it's interesting. And I've never really played a game like this. Um, mm. But a Skyrim for me, it makes it, it's too open world and I never know where to go. That's, Very my, true. that's my issue. I'm I'm, I'm a lost puppy. I don't know where to go. And every time that I ask you for directions, I feel like a stupid idiot. <laughs> and, I also still, and I also still don't know where to go. Yeah, there's markers, <laughs> but then I try to I try to go up like an uproad path. I, yeah. I do. No, that's I do so my, true. I do with my dad of like, maybe I can get around it this way, but it's not real life. I can't get around it this way because there's a barrier. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very true. And that's all the Elder Scrolls games. Like, you feel like the marker, wherever it is, you're going the right way. But also, yeah. it's you don't know for sure if you're going the right way. 
And um, when I first started playing a game, I would go the wrong way all the time. But now that I'm so well acquainted with the game, I know exactly where to go. So I feel like you kind of have to get well acquainted with the game to know what's next. Yeah. That being said, I cannot rank it anything lower than B. I can't. So I I, I, I want to, I'm trying to also combine it with your thoughts on it. B tier? Sure. I think so. Hmm. <laughs> I do want to put it at eight tier. I really want to put it at eight tier. Just put I it love at eight tier. Just because, put it at eight tier. Well, we're going to consider the next game, and I think I already know what I'm ranking the next game. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to put it at A tier. And I think okay. I think people will agree with me because I think it's a really good game. I don't think there's many flaws with it other than the ones I mentioned. Yeah. It, I don't care what people say. They were like, you, you only need mods to make it playable. I played it for vanilla for a very long time, and it is still a really good game. So, yeah, I don't, I think people are just stubborn. Um, next game. Seeing as we're on the topic of Elder Scrolls, we have Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Gigi, you've never touched this game before, right? No, I haven't. No. Nice virgin to it. Okay. So I'm taking the wheel on it then. Give me, um, give me the rundown. So I'm not going to explain the story to you because that is a lot. Um, but that being said, I do think it has a incredibly good main story. Overall. Playing the main story itself is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> you have to... <laughs> Like, looking at it overall, it's a fantastic story. Playing it, it's very frustrating because there is several of these Oblivion gates that you have to close, and closing the gates gets so incredibly frustrating. It gets so hard to get into the game. It took me several months to get into this game purely because I was dreading closing the Oblivion gates, but everybody was telling me the the end of the quest is fantastic, which it is. It is isn't. It is fantastic. And but getting to that point is so annoying. <laughs> so I love this game. I love the quests. I think the DLCs are incredible too. Um there is there's two DLCs on this game. And I think the Shivering Isles DLC has gotta be my favorite DLC ever, I wanna say. But in a sense of, I don't have nostalgia with this game. I didn't grow up playing it. I started playing it a few years ago. So the nostalgia sense is not there. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, Gigi, if you were... If you were going to play this game, do you think you would be into it in the way I've described it, or do you think you would skip it? Um, if it's, if it's like, similar in, like, controls and, like, kind of like story sense to Skyrim that I think I would rank it around like B or C. It sounds like a good team. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, the characters in it are really good. Um, the graphics in it are not that great, but also I don't think you need great graphics to have a great game, but it does help. Yeah. So, as much as I love Oblivion, I have so many more games on here that I absolutely love. I want to put it at tier C. Okay. I am sorry, Oblivion. I know you did nothing to me, but the sword dynamics are also funky. And to even make the game enjoyable, you have to set it relatively low on difficulty. (laughs) <laughs> okay next game um this is kind of a combination of three four games um but it's the batman arkham game so it's i'm gonna include arkham asylum 
Arkham City, Arkham Knight, and Arkham Origins. So technically, it's the first three I mentioned, but the fourth one is from another company, but it's canon in the story, so I'm going to keep it. Um, okay. These games were introduced to me by my brother. Um, they are very hard hitting on the detective aspect of Batman, which I think is phenomenal. Um, Because I feel like a lot of people, especially mainstream fans of Batman, like who don't read comics and stuff, forget that he he's the world's greatest detective. That's what he's known for is being a detective. But a lot of people, like mainstream fans, they see him as a superhero. She is. But he's a detective. Yeah. He's an ordinary. He's in the boy. detective comics. Exactly. B tier. No? Yeah. B tier. Okay. Yeah. Because I love that. <laughs> and, and plus, uh, Nightwing is in uh, Arkham City and Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight. Yeah. And Arkham Knight is also a really good portrayal of Jason Todd. Anyways, moving on to a classic. Star Wars The Complete Saga. Yes. S tier? A tier. At A-tier? least A tier. A tier. Okay, I like it. Um, What are your thoughts on this game, Gigi? I feel like I've been talking too much. I mean, I think that it's like... it's It's a little bit replayable, in my opinion. Like, the stories aren't, like, you know, it's a, it's based off of the movies. So, if you're able to rewatch the movies, you're able to replay the game. And mm-hmm. there's different collectibles and everything that you can get. And you have to have different, like, characters sometimes in order to reach things. So, you do have to replay it in a sense um, if you, like, mm-hmm. want to complete the game. But overall, it's just a great game. I think, I think personally... It's one of the best, if not the best, Lego Star Wars game that it has. Definitely. And that's, I agree. And that's taking into consideration the one that's on the Switch, which I still kind of like, but it's just, it, it's weird for me because I grew up playing it on the Wii and it's different. <laughs> um, I, I definitely agree. I think it's, um, it's such a classic. I feel like I... This is probably one of the first video games I've ever played in my entire life. Um, And growing up a Star Wars fan and playing these games, because when you're a kid, Star Wars is much different than when you're like a teenager. And I feel like the games make them so much more enjoyable. I don't know if that makes sense. But this game in specific, it's, it's, it's simplicity is so good you know yeah like even the lack of speech makes it good (laughs) and i do agree i think the skywalker saga is a little much for me because we did try to play a lot of it like i think we got through all the main uh story of all the all of them but i didn't have the same feeling i did when i played the complete saga yeah that's not to say yeah it's it's just different and it has it does have that nostalgia sense to it and i feel like that game just it's just perfect yeah (laughs) i played it no me and during covid me and my brother sat down played the entire game the entire like a story mode for every single episode in one day. Wow. That's crazy. And that's, no, and that was after we hadn't played it for like 10 years. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I just keep saying the same thing. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. It is crazy. I mean, and it is a phenomenal game. Yeah. I keep saying phenomenal. I'm going to, I need to crack my thesaurus out. I don't have one. It's, a, it's an indubious game. I don't think that's how you use that word. It is a... I don't like burn my nose. 
Can't it is a majestic me. game, if I do say so myself. You sure you don't want to do S tier? Oh, we S can do Star S tier. S for, S for Star, Star Wars. Wars. S for Star Wars. S tier complete not saga. L, not L for Lego, but S for Star Wars. <laughs> okay, so far our S tiers are Minecraft, Solitaire, and Star Wars Complete Saga. We have no S tiers. All very different games. Yeah. <laughs> we have no F tiers as of yet. Yes. Moving on to another Lego game. I'm not sure if you've played this one. Um, it's specifically Lego Batman 2. Not Lego Batman oh. 1, not Lego Batman 3, Lego Batman 2. Um, I forget what it's it's got a it's got a full name, but I can't remember it. Um, have you ever played this game? I think I was at your house once when your brother was playing it. So I've seen somebody play that game, but I don't, I've never played it. I may have mm. touched the controller <laughs> once or twice. This game is, I want to say, and I don't know if Alexander will agree with me on this, um, but I want to say that this is the game that me that made me and my brother like each other. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, because before this, we played this game, um, we were, I mean, I'm not going to speak for him too much, because he'll make me go back on my words if I see him, but um, it's, it, it made me want to be around him more, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, it brought yeah. us closer together. That's what I'm going to say. It brought us closer together. Um, because... We would have this really weird thing that we did where I would be the Flash and he would be Clark Kent. Like, not Superman, Clark Kent. Because he still had the laser eye. (laughs) And we would go to the hospital in the parking lot. He would sit there and do his laser vision. And I would be the Flash and run around the building in circles and see how many times he could zap me. And I'm, I'm trying to find where we had fun in that. But no, it that was so like much fun. fun. It was so much fun. Like fun. I would ask Alexander. I would do that now. If we still do it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that. We would do that for hours. I kid you not. Hours. <laughs> that being said. I don't play it that much. I do enjoy playing the other Lego Batman games a lot. Lego Batman 1 and Lego Batman 3. I yeah. can't think of there's a... There's Lego DC Villains. I know that one. But I think this is probably my favorite out of all of them. That being said... It's not my favorite game ever. Yeah. So, like, B-tier? Oh, I was thinking C. Well, then C tier, because I haven't played it. Yeah, because it is a it is a it is a really good game. Yeah, but I don't feel like it's B tier worthy. Yeah. Okay. Assassin's Creed Two. This is Assassin's Creed 2 because I played Assassin's Creed 1 and I played some of it and I could not keep playing it and that was how much I hated it. (laughs) Like I played like five minutes of it and I could not keep going because I hated it so much. Well, that sucks. (laughs) So I only have Assassin's Creed 2 on here. Oh. So I'm not even... Because it's not my favorite game. Um, But... It is a it's a it's a it's a single player game. It's not online or anything. It is um it is sort of open world. Yeah, it's open world. And um you play as this guy Desmond Miles who goes into the animus which like um my brother's going to get so angry if I butcher this. So he basically touches into his DNA and is able to play through 
his ancestors' lives. And they're doing this in order to save the world. Now, I want to say something, something for the, for the sake of my brother, for the sake of this podcast, Assassin's Creed 2 is the only Assassin's Creed game that I have played and enjoyed. Okay. And all the other games I have never played before. I had played Assassin's Creed 1. You already heard that. I didn't like it, so I stopped playing it. So Assassin's Creed 2 is really the only game that I've played. My brother has played pretty much all of them. He likes all of them. But, Gigi, you've never played this game before. No, I haven't. This one's up to you. Which means that everything is riding on this. If people really like Assassin's Creed, like the other games, they're going to come after you. (laughs) And not me. Well, it is a really fun game. (laughs) But I feel like I'm going to put it low. Not too low, because my brother would kill me. But I didn't grow up with these games as much as my brother did. Um, I feel like if he was here, he'd rank it probably A tier or S tier or something. Um, but personally, I like other games more. Um, I think it's really well done. I... I would love to play more of it. I do think it's a super replayable game, honestly. Um, I think the other games are really well done. Um, I think Ezio is incredibly good looking. And I do think that that is a key aspect into it. So. I'm going D. Because if I go any lower than that. Not a C for I, Creed? C <laughs> for Creed. No, D for Desmond Miles. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If if I play more Assassin's Creed games in the future, we might change it, but that's for later. (laughs) Okay, next. Okay, I'm going to try to go through these next ones as fast as I can, because it's getting kind of late. Jedi Fallen Order... This I'm also counting uh, Jedi Survivor with this. I do think Jedi Survivor is a better game overall. But I'm just going to count them as one. Pretend they're just one game. So um, it's basically a Star Wars game. So if you don't like Star Wars, um, or, I'm not going to say that. If you haven't been properly introduced to star wars this is a good game to play to get acquainted with it um yeah because it, it's a brand new character it's characters we've never seen before which i think is great i love introduction of new characters and you become so attached to his story and who he is as a person and um like his relationship to the people around him I think that um, people who like Cameron Monaghan, like it's it's a go to. Like it's easy, it's easy to play. It's easy to follow. The uh, controls are super simple. I mean, the most confusing it gets is when you start getting perks and stuff. But I I want to say it's either A or B tier. I really like this game. What do you think, considering all the other games? I'm putting it in B. What do you think, B? Yeah, sure. I keep saying I'm going to go by these fast, and I just don't. (laughs) It's the fastest I did it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, Gotham Knights. You've never played this game before, so I'm going to try to... No. (laughs) <laughs> um, Gotham Knights is a single no it is a online game um, to a certain degree you can play the entire story mode by yourself you can do a bunch of stuff by yourself you can do all the quests if you want by yourself um, it is optional to play online with people which I think is cool I think it's super cool that it's themed around um, the Bat family so the characters in it is Nightwing, Dick Grayson, uh, Tim Drake, Robin. That's one person. Um, 
and Red Hood, which is Jason Todd, and then Batgirl, which is Barbara Gordon. Now, I do, I love that you can play as all four of them. Um, you get different, um, like, people will interact with them differently depending on which hero it is, which I think is really cool. Um, you do, you you get the same ending no matter what you do, but you get different interactions which I think is kind of cool and like different, like, um, like there's like different things said, you get different choices, different options. Um, I do like the gameplay. I think it's a very underrated game. I feel like a lot of people don't like it. I, I don't know what tier to put it at. What do you think? It sounds like at least B tier. Yeah. Sounds fun. I've played it several times now. I really like it. I think B tier. Why not? Why not? B All for right. Barbara Gordon. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Anything for B her. B for Batman. Not in that B game. B for Batman. Spoiler alert, he dies in that game. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the whole point of the game. <laughs> That's like the first thing it says is Batman's dead. <laughs> What the f- <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to play the game to find out. Um, oh, okay. My next one. I tried everything I could to get you into this game, and I don't think I fully ever did. I I don't think that you did, but I have to say before you announce what it is, S tier, because it raised you basically. <laughs> No, when you had your AVM, I always want to say ATM. <laughs> when you Spoiler had your alert, AVM. everyone. Uh, I had an AVM. Okay, continue. Yeah, when Gigi was like eight, she had a brain malfunction. <laughs> um, chronic brain malfunction, actually. Um, and chronic makes it sound like it's still happening, which it is, anymore. but it's a different. It's a different. <laughs> it's uh, just Gigi's got stupid. part of her brain going. Yeah. What I have to say about this game. Oh, I still haven't announced it. It's Club Penguin. I- <laughs> <laughs> the way we've been talking about it made it sound like it was such a big game, but it's Club Penguin. <laughs> um, the story in this, it's phenomenal. It is incredible. There's lore. There's like characters that you could meet. That being said, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of weird people on this game, hence the struggle of online, online games. Um, yeah, it did. It, I feel like it did raise me. It, it, I lived you, when you went through your AVM, this is what got me through that. Um, I know a lot of things got you through that, (laughs) including (laughs) surgeries. Um, yeah. But this Club Penguin was my surgery. No, you wanna you wanna know what got me through that pizza? That wasn't from the cafeteria, obviously. You sound like a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> but it's true; it was the only <laughs> good meal I had. Cafeteria yeah. food always sucks. Yeah, whatever you say, Mikey. Okay, um, I think that I'm gonna put it at A tier purely because you've never played it. Well, you've Aww. played it, but like... But I said S tier. <laughs> but I don't play it anymore. Well, you can't. <laughs> okay, S tier. <laughs> I wonder if you can go on the Wayback Machine and like look up Club Penguin if you can still play it. Gigi, if I could travel back in time, I would play Club Penguin. That's the first thing I would do. <laughs> <laughs> this is our last game. The Sims 4. Yeah. That was a statement. (laughs) I mean, I feel like The Sims 4 and also The Sims 3 are like Mm -hmm. at least A tier for me. Because I, I used to play them so often. I still play them sometimes. I haven't played in a couple months. But like, like The Sims 3 was also very nostalgic to me. Because I used to like love that game. I only yeah. had two packs. 
And now I don't know why, but I don't have the packs anymore, which makes it really sad. If if anybody's like, what what DLC do I buy for The Sims 3? I only want to buy one. Buy Discover University. Or it's not called Discover University. That's The Sims 4 one. Buy the University pack. It adds so many cool things. You get a mini fridge, and you and one of the options is cold one, so you can crack a you can crack a cold one open with a voice, and, I, and it's great. It's great. Um, I feel like I was with Sims. I was introduced to The Sims Three, um, because that's what that's what I grew up with. Really, was with The Sims Three, but when The Sims Four came out. I instantly liked it. Like, it yeah. wasn't even in the question of whether I liked it or not. It was, like, instantly, like, yeah, I like this game. Um, I feel like um, Dan and Phil, Phil, I feel like Dan and Phil pioneered this game. They paved the way for this game. They did. With uh, Dill Helter. But I don't play it that much. I feel like after the character customization... Uh, once you spent enough time in the character customization, you've gotten very sick of the game. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to revisit it. If you're if you're like me, or or like a lot of people, um, one of the biggest things that you have that you do is like you'll spend so much time working on a character that it'll be like an hour and a half, and you'll be like. I don't even really want to play this anymore. It took a really long time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it's okay. I'll play. I'll play this character next time that I do this, and then you won't play for months, and then you start a new game because you forgot that character existed. So you make a new character, and it happens again. That's yeah. how mine look. It's just new game, new game, new game, new game <laughs> of untouched games. Yeah, but. Once you get into, like, playing it and stuff, it can be very fun. Yeah. Um, which I think it's funny how you mentioned how you're, like, a lost puppy. You need instruction, but you like <laughs> The Sims. The most open world game there is. <laughs> okay, The Sims is not... The Sims 3 was pretty open world, but The Sims 4 is not very open world if you don't have, like, a bunch of packs, which I do have a lot of packs. Um... But, like, you you can look that stuff up easily and get, like, an answer if you're, like, um, where is this thing? But it's especially, like, like I don't know. But like, you can go through all of the worlds in order to find something. So if I'm looking for a nightclub, I will look into the all of the worlds um, and be like, oh, this world doesn't have a nightclub. This world doesn't have a nightclub. And it'll just, like, continue that cycle. But... The, the thing is, is that I feel like it's easier for me because there are packs associated with, like, different lot traits. So, like, the cafes are all in Windenburg because that was the cafe and club pack. We don't have time to get into uh, The Sims 4 and their awful DLC for <laughs> these really small things. Well, but. I have never gotten... That's a lie. I've gotten DLCs. I haven't gotten more than just a couple. I, I, I try not to spend my too much money on video games. Um, that's not to say I haven't spent a lot of money on Skyrim. I have. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it's a classic game, though. I do think it's fun. Um, but after a certain point, you don't know what to do, I feel. I feel like, personally, it's like solid B tier at least. B tier. Yeah. You don't think it's an A tier? Well, I would put it in the A tier, except like it gets frustrating sometimes, mm-hmm. like even in like the menus. So, and like create a sim. So, I'd put okay. it in B tier. But if you want to rank it higher, we can rank it higher. Um. I, I think it's B tier because I think it's I think it could have been more fun. Um like if I if I wasn't into so many other games, I feel like it could be more fun. Yeah. You know. But for some people they love they live off this game. 
they love this game, which I agree. I think it's a great game, but it's a very it's a very fun game if you're able to consistently get into it. Yeah, but if you can't, then yeah. okay, B tier it is. Okay, we have our complete tier list. Would you like to hear them? Yes. Okay, so we have nothing in F tier, which is good. It all means right. we're not haters; we're lovers. <laughs> In they are our, all our favorite games, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, and E, and I'm going worst to best right now. So in E, we have our outlier, Left 4 Dead 2. In D, we have House Flipper. Sorry, I had to read it. Uh, we have House Flipper and Assassin's Creed 2. Sorry, Alexander. Um, in C tier, we have the Stanley Parable. What Remains of Edith Finch, Oblivion, and Lego Batman 2. In B tier, we have Stardew Valley, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 4, the Arkham, the Arkham Trilogy, whatever you want to call it, um, Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, Gotham Knights, Sims 4. Uh, A tier, we have Life is Strange and Skyrim. S tier, we have Minecraft, Solitaire. Star Wars The Complete Saga and Club Penguin. Oh, yeah. We I did think it. That's, a, that's a good array. That's a good array of games. Yeah. I was surprised that I, I didn't realize that we had so many games. <laughs> I know. I didn't either. I thought we just had a, I thought you had all of them and I just had a few, but I, I think we had just as much as each other. Yeah. All right. Before we have to drag this on any longer, Gigi, you want to wrap us up? All right. That's all for today. Thank you for being a fellow pasta lover, pasta fam. We love you. We miss you. And we hope you eat some good pasta tonight. Good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>